Yes. Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another meeting of the Hong Kong Study Circle and Hong Kong Philatelic Society. Um, the, tonight, uh, the theme of the meeting is Hong Kong errors. Again, Hong Kong. Uh, we have a wonderful meeting last time, and um, and I think there are still a few more members who have material to share. Um, okay. Without further ado. I think I would like to invite Sarah, Sarah Harvey, in Australia, to uh, uh, show us a few things. Sarah, hello everyone. Um, yes, I'll hope are. I can get it get it working properly this time. Oh no! It says you cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Okay, right, absolutely right. <laughs> my fault. Oh, good, not me. No, no, it's my fault. Okay, has it come up? Yep. No, not yet. Yes, yes. Oh, no. Susan, over to you. Yeah. <laughs> Green share. In international. There it is. Oh, it's come up. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Okay, the broken Kong area is a very ordinary not unusual error on the King George V four cent. Um, but there's a few interesting things that I would like to ask everyone else if they wouldn't mind checking for. Mm -hmm. Because, can we go to number two? Yep. <laughs> Good coordination. Um, that just shows where it is, where it is, and we go to the next one, Susan. Okay, these these are just the, the scans of a few examples, and if you look at it, most of them are very much the, are the same, but then occasionally you get a very different one, D and F, <laughs> are different, and it's also found on the on the China overprint. Um, but I've only got two of those. Um, so let's go to the next one. Yep. And if you look, those two are completely different again. Um, so would you mind just checking yours and seeing what other people have got? Because there's no mention in previous literature of variations or progression of this error. Um, so perhaps somebody else can find, can point out or has more var variety of it for me. That's the, uh, Sarah, does the yes. left hand uh, example actually looks like uh, maybe it's an artifact there? Maybe it's, oh, sorry? It's scratched, it's been scratched out or something. The uh, left hand one. That you, that's on the screen. Well, the, the, those are the uh, two on China overprints I've got. Oh, okay. You look, uh, look, look, look closely with a, with a magnifying glass and see whether somebody yeah. actually scratched the, to the paper, you know, scratch it to print mm. on. Mm. Okay. The right I'll one is perfectly okay to me. Yes, M mine is like the right one. Yeah. Uh, well, that would explain why the left one is like that. A little, okay, a little, I'll have another look. Just, just a paper scratch. Oh, oh, that good, would be good. Okay, okay, I'll have another look at that then to, yeah. to see. Um, I'll have to. I'll have a look in the morning when it's light. <laughs> 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 thank you. Thank you. Now tell us if he's not, because I mean that there's obviously a, 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 a like a progressive uh, variety. Yes, I would have liked to have been able to work out the requisition number and hence the printing date from, from them. If anyone has any used examples with dates, 
my two used examples are, uh, as I said, 1923 and 29, so it's not much help. Um, somebody else might have some on cover, which helps explain the dates. Um, please, okay, so if you, over to you, if you wouldn't mind checking yours. Mm. Thank you very much. Stop sharing. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. And I could help. <laughs> right. No, the X at the end. No, I've done the wrong thing now. You've got me doing the wrong thing. I've oh. not open now. Well, yes, you have. Your, your, your viewers there, but still open. Now we've gone silent. Yes. Susan. Next person. Yeah. Susan, you are next. Oh, right. All right. Hello everyone. Ah. This little display is about renvoi par avion, a hand ah. stamp that's linked with advice of receipt. And I'd like to know whether it's been used incorrectly on these covers. I don't know whether I'm the one that's in error thinking it, or whether the clocks were in error using it. I have found many references to it. As far as I know, it's only been... And an example of it is in the Hong Kong Post Office Cancellation Book, 1983. Proud lists it in his post history of Hong Kong, but I think he's used this book because he gives the date 16383. And again, just used at the one post office. Lee Scamp came across an example on a cover and it's illustrated in Hong Kong Study Circle. And this is it. Unfortunately, there's no date on it. But we at the same branch office, you've got the AR for advice of receipt, and then underneath, renvoi par avion. Now, to my way of thinking, it was pointless putting it on the envelope because the message was to the post office who was going to send the card back. Post office. This. Susan, yes. Uh, are you are you showing stuff from your screen? Yes. Uh, but you're not. No. I'm not. You're not, uh, you're not sharing your screen. The picture is very nice. It's you. <laughs> but, No, I'll have to go right through to you in just a minute. Sorry. To exit. Minus it. Don't kill it, just minus it. Long bring you up. Minus it again. All right, try again. Share screen. Oh. See something now? Perfect. Oh, good. Sorry about that. It's because I showed Sarah's verse. It's confused me. No worries. So, so this, here we are, the Renvoi Par Avion hand stamp that I'm querying. And these are the details. Post office, the cancellation book. Hong Kong Postal History Scam Reference. And this is his cover. There's the AR at the top here and Renvoi Par Avignon there. 
Now, as I was saying, I don't think it should be put on the envelope. To my way of thinking, it should be put on the card because it's an instruction to the returning post office that the card should be sent. I have only come across three examples of this hand stamp and all three have been on cover. This is an item sent to the UK. It's a double weight one. So two times 130 for the postage, 40 cents registration, 40 cents for advice of receipt and the 50 cents for reply by air. There's no AR hand stamp. indication of advice of receipt on it. All there is is the Renvoi par Avion hand stamp. So that I feel is an error. The third example I've come across is this one. Now this one does have the AR hand stamp on and again you've got the Renvoi par Avion. I do like this cover because it's wrongly franked. So we've got a three and a half ounce letter, seven times $1.30, $2 for the registration fee, 60 cents for advice of receipt, and 50 cents for reply by air, which gives a total of $12.20, 60 cents over franked. And what appears to have happened is that the $1.10 for reply by air didn't include the AR fee. So they've paid the AR fee twice. This is a copy of a reply card. The item originally was sent from Hong Kong to Clitheroe in the UK. And this is the reply card that's been sent for. The part that I'd draw your attention to is this, which says, if the advice is to be returned by air, mark very clearly with the indication of renvoi par avion and a blue label or stamp par avion. Well, the label has been affixed, but there is no renvoi par avion. No. Side. And I got this example from the China Philatelic Association book on parcel post. So I'd love feedback on this. Am I correct in thinking that the hand stamp should have been applied to the card? Has anyone seen the hand stamp on an AR card? Has anyone seen the hand stamp on other envelopes? Thank you. I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Susan. Yes, very interesting. Uh, I must admit I've never seen it before. So I don't know about members, any, any feedback from any of our members attending the meeting? Okay, so uh, we'll leave it at that. No, no more comments. And um, I think, oh, I think I, I can see um, a Sam's there. So, uh, Sam, yes, right, good. I'm here. In time. <laughs> good. So, now what have you got to show, Sam? Hey, I request. I'll push your screen. Okay. Hong Hong. Is it showing? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to present not in a logical sequence but in the order that uh, 
I have first tracked this and it may not even be an error. I'm calling it an evolution of a marking. So I, I need your input because uh, at the end of the day, use, then convince, uh, you know. So this was the stamp I got maybe 40 years ago. And uh, obviously it's the second K that became, become an H. So uh, this is pretty, the, the, the thick, the wearing and everything fits the description of a web type D. And I call your index plus sometimes where the H is because that is where the D and the and subsequent cancels are. Now, Prow, this is, I've reproduced what Prow said and at the end of the day, it says become worn. So I uh, had a friend show this to some high expert in Hong Kong. And this is the comment I received. So I'm not going to say who, you know. Anyway, this was in my very younger days, you know, in the 1980s, where I actually had a Hong Kong exhibit. And on the page, I put, you know, I put the stamp. And then there was a similar item. Now, you could see on the card that the second one is also uh, H-like, I'm going to call it. And uh, this one have no index. This is Prow D34 without index. But again, I put a question mark in there. So after the, those discoveries, I was tracking it on, on loose adhesive. And uh, this particular one looks like another H, but, uh, but look at the index, it's really far down. And I cannot match it to a Prow type. Another one, 96 and this was 1901 this is probably because of the index that fit proud d39 and uh, subsequently i said you know i need it on on uh, carts or whatever on covers to show now this is what supposed to be a normal one uh, index is centered and, the K so-called D30 again. So the more I look at it, I said that the so-called D type, there, sh there should be multiple strikes or multiple D cancellators in Hong Kong because, uh, you know, in 1897, this was, this was not, you know, worn yet, but in 1900, 1901. So 1900, However, this is this look like an index E or F, and I can. So another strike, 1899, index is pretty well center, and I could trace it to a, a D39, proud type. I thought the proud type is going to help me in addition to the, uh, the web types. Now, um, so I asked myself, can I show, can I show the strike? Can I show it on the same day? So I was able to get a pair of cards, as you can see. And one got a strike of the so-called type D worn. The H, as you can see, is, is pretty well. The K become an H. Meanwhile, the, the so-called the newer ones that were sent to Hong Kong was a type G index F. And again, it does not match a proud type. So at that point in time, 1900, I think because of the wear of the type D, the Hong Kong post office was already replacing it. Strikes. Uh, the K, this is pretty well normal. The C is pretty well indexed, but take a look at this. We're, all of a sudden, you know, th this is blur. We can't, we don't know what that is, but look at how far up the 
the C index is. So again, it cannot match a proud type. So I was lucky enough to, you know, I collect postage due like Andrew, and I was able to get three cards roughly on the same. In February 7th again. So those were identical dates. Now, uh, you know, of, of interest, of course, is the K, but also this particular one on the same card that has two strikes, you know, a, a G type N and F type. Uh, the G type, which are not under question, this one doesn't even have an index. So I thought that because it's a postage due, that there were more than one. And this one, the K is pretty well blurred, you know. So, and the, the index, the A is pretty well, you know, is high. And the last example I'm gonna show is 1901 because after 1901, the type Ds are very hard to find because the Victoria, Hong Kong placement, are, uh, you know, replacement are there. So this is another strike, you know, again, this may be an H, The C again is pretty far up. So yeah, I, I invite comments because I'm more confused than, than anything. So thank you. Sam. Hi, Simon. Uh, can, can you go back to your postage steel page? Postage steel? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. The cards, yeah. The cards. Yeah. Okay, wait a I'm just wondering whether there is a, a word uh, writing on top of the stem of, of the cup. Yeah. Is there something like, yeah. Stamped. Stamped, Stamped. right? Stamp, 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 yeah. Yeah, supposing the, the card was posted into a pillar box or posted in Kowloon. So it needs mm -hmm. to be crossed out by a word stamp or, or a date. That's mm -hmm, the practice mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So you think that one strike is Kowloon, the other one? Oh, no, because... maybe. It, yeah, it, it was strike at the GPO when, 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 when they collected that bag of mails from, from Kowloon or, or a certain pillar box. Mm -hmm. And then so uh, this yeah, particular Hong Kong, one, the later and, and one, the it, found out that it, 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 it was a postage deal and then applied the, the art to cancel it and charge it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, 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 that's, that's my, my only uh, question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It seems like a, it's a D30 that over time the uh, it disintegrated into an H, but uh, you know. Oh, no, by also, the way, like, like I said, is there any sender's address on, on the card or at, at the yeah. back of the card? That's what I was uh, going to ask. <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to send that to you later. I don't okay. have it in front of me. Sorry. Because, because Sam, the stamped, uh, Simon says, was on pillar box mail, mm -hmm. but also on peak mail. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Let me, yeah, let me say, take a look later. Calvin. Simon, what was the significance of writing stamped on, on the stamp in order to stop them being stolen? Yeah. From the stamp being stolen? Yeah. Because it was you not. Could either put, you, could, you could either put stamped or you could put the date. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does that justify it as being a security marking, basically? Or you could use a company chart, too. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Something, some device or something to tie the stamp to the, to the cover of a card. You know, some people just draw two lines right across. Yeah. Yes. But, but very interesting that uh, the lower two cards, the, the, this is type G. Uh, it has no index letter. So it just looks at, it's like um, just a, a 
some dumb chop or uh, some canceller just to cancel the purpose of which is to just to cancel the stamp. There on the top card, there's no address, but you know it shows the. Uh, yeah, this is the February seventh. Oh no, this is not the top card. This is one of the the bottom two cards, so it shows a peak thing, but. But so is the second card, which is a harbor thing. There is no address. There's just a, uh, you know, this is a few miles from Hong Kong. This one say, the other one is uh, many thanks for letter and paper. We will write in a few days and assign FAB. The top card is greetings from Canton. So, uh, and it says with all good, uh, whatever from us both. So there's no address. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So one of them came from Canton. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, the, uh, the top one, the February 14 one, the, the, the one with single strike was a Canton card. Okay. And it was written on the same day. Uh, wait a minute. Same day or not? 211. So it, yeah, yeah. Uh, Richard, it may have been written in Canton because it, it well, no, it, it's 214. It's the same day as the strike, so. Let's just use it again. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, Sam, for sharing. I know that you're in a bit of a rush, so. Uh, I hope that uh, you can make whatever appointment you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, around that time. Anyway, thanks. So um, I think the next person to show would be, uh, I think, Philippe. Yes. Excuse me, uh, Andrew. Oh yes, Charles. Uh, yes. Yeah. Can I can I do a little bit uh, elaboration on the? Okay, um, carry on. Yeah. It? Yeah. Uh, Let me do the sharing first. Yeah, go ahead. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, that is uh, Shanghai uh, Type G2 CDS. And uh, sometimes you'll find that, okay, there's a missing index C. At the top, you can see the one, two, three, the, the strip of five, uh, two cents, uh, karma. You can see the right uh, uh, second stripe, Shanghai, is a missing index C. But another three stripe, clearly with a C. Therefore, I will consider certain of the situation of a uh, 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 missing index, even. Uh, the second line, the um, uh, two cents screen, two cents screen missing year would be properly a mis alignment of the uh, 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 index as neck or uh, the year snack unevenly apply on the cover or else. Unless it is clearly that uh, uh, consistently to find uh, a particular CDS on a particular day with a missing uh, index or missing year with intentional purpose. Otherwise, I can say that it is just a, a isolated accidental situation for the under anchor of the index or year or day or the month. Probably uneven pressure being applied. Even, on the, even, uh, even, if, even if it's uh, uh, the pressure, okay, 
you can see the uh, this is this, okay? Can you see? Yeah. It's quite, it is quite e evenly applied, but maybe this part sinking down for mm -hmm. the cover, okay? Or other yeah. part is uh, just uh, up a little bit beyond yeah. the level of a strike. Therefore, the index C sink, sinking down. So, causing this one, because this is a, a very good example. This one is a very good example. You can see the C, C, missing C, and C. Therefore, something is unevenly inside the cover. Yeah. Uh, the content or else a little bit thick or a little bit thin mm. therefore causing this part cannot touch the the, the surface of the yeah. of yeah. the top okay resulting in that situation this one missing year may be the same missing yeah. year may be the same this is also missing index c same situation mm. therefore i can say yeah it is an error but <laughs> I can say it is an isolated UM <laughs> uh, without systematic uh, situation, no uh, uh, explanation on that. Okay. And Charles, have you worked out because if the one you look at the one on the two cent green, um, this is very this is quite common without the year slug. Uh, you can find it on stamp on card. Um, and it's often misdescribed by dealers as missing year. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the year slide is probably there. And as you said, as you have said, uh, the, uh, it's, it's due to uneven pressure uh, on, on application of the, of the, of the strike. Uh, have you actually worked out uh, which year uh, did it occur? Uh, I have a cover. Mm. I have a cover. I stop sharing this one first. Yeah. Uh, this hole for a while. Mm. I'm sorry, I need to search for a while. Can you see that? Yeah. It is uh, all free. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can see there's a missing year, right? Mm -hmm. You can see? Apparent missing year. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Apparently the missing year. Mm. The back stem of the rifle. Yeah. Free. You need something like that to show the year. If it's just an isolated hand stem, you cannot tell. But it's best to have an arrival mark or transit mark or a manuscript. Uh, mark to, just to show which year. So O3, yes, we can go all go and check whether there's something wrong with the O3 slug, maybe slightly uh, uneven, so causing that 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 problem to arise. And large it, you can see in that for the year, mm. nothing. Yeah, yeah, maybe the the, the, the O3 slug. Uh, yeah, maybe it's sinking down. Yeah, it's not known. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah, right. not in it. Not in its normal position. Mm. In, in fact, on on a second marking, mm. you, it seems that you can see a part of the tree. Yeah. Uh, just uh, yes, part of the tree on there, isn't there? Yes, it's the arch of the tree. Yeah. yeah. Yes, on both strikes. So it's just a Which confirm it was not missing. It was just uh, yeah. uneven applied or. Uneven apply, yeah. Uh, um, okay, uh, as a as my view only. Okay, uh, sorry, Sam. 
uh, I think that what uh, you show for the for the uh, Hong Kong become Hong Hong, okay, for the for the for the second word of the K, maybe it is also inking problem because the 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 K become a uh, a little bit thick, and therefore uh, a thick inking may causing uh, the K looking like uh, H. And for the for the missing uh, index or else, it is maybe just uh, due to the pressure situation. Yeah. Therefore, uh, that's my view on it. Okay. And. Uh, I would like to show another cover. It is with a Hong Kong CDS with a, 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 a reverse index D. Uh, please hold for a while. Uh, it must be an error for sure. Uh, share screen. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Right here. Enlarge it. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, now we go back to uh, Philippe. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, after all those nice uh, postal history items, my presentation is going to be pretty trivial, but we need everything. So, what is that? Uh, is not that. Wait, yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Can, yeah. can you see it? Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, I am going to show you some minor flows on uh, QE2. And I have extracted from the uh, last uh, meeting uh, this frame from uh, Dr. Shaw, which is a very, very good explanation on how those errors in printing are occurring. So the, I, I found this uh, schematic extremely good, which is why I re reproduce it on this paper. So if we go uh, to the next page, here are some few errors. And I tried to show errors which are not, not all of them, but most of them not illustrated in Yang. So otherwise you, you have them. The first one is on the year of monkey. And you see that part of the head of the monkey here is damaged. That is not recorded in Young. Um, on the sea craft, there and there are many, many here, obviously, but some are more interesting than others. Uh, this one, you see, it looks like uh, there is another car here. And, uh, and that one, it's a shift of the pink. And you can see the, it's a very large uh, shift of the pink printing. And you can see some appearance of the pink yeah. printing here. Please. <coughs> if we, another one, and that on those, during those years, it has been a lot of those uh, uh, blobs there, which appeared in, uh, in many places of the stamps. And uh, it's not very significant, but that means uh, uh, the roll were pretty dirty. And there again, you see more there. And you, you can find many of them in the, uh, during all these times. This is a, is a rudder, and uh, it's, it's hard to, to be seen, but uh, uh, the rudder is uh, not ink, and here there is some ink in it. Mm, the reproduction is not very, very good. My scan is not very good. It's more noticeable on the stamp. It's The, all the series of this um, in the human right, some broken character, 
here you got the broken eight. Um, on this one is a, a short short u uh, missing uh, u altogether, a bad printing of 1968. Uh, here also again the. So when you look at all those stamps, you can find many of those. This one is recorded, but I, I find it was interesting. It's a red omitted in, uh, in the year of the rooster. Very striking mistake. And those, uh, those lines also, which appear in many, many stamps of this time, This one is, is recorded in Young, but it is not, uh, well, there is an image, but no record. Uh, that's a broken character. Uh, it's, see, this one is longer, the normal is longer than this one. Yeah. It's, it's short rather than broken. And that is a gold tail, which is, uh, And now it, it's uh, in the double printing, some are more interesting than others. Some you can hardly see them. But in the case of the year of the ox, it looks like a double tail, which uh, is quite unusual. And in the year of the tiger, also, it is a very clear double brown printing. You can see the, uh, on the character. Okay, that's it for my presentation. That's, uh, that's all I had uh, to okay. show. Yes, really is wonderful. Uh, some of these things that you can pick up, uh, uh, you know, from, from sort of stamp dealers or eBay or whatever, you know, it's uh, interesting, very interesting uh, uh, stuff that you've showed. Uh, thank you very much. Anybody got any comments on the errors? Perhaps it's all due to uh, misalignment of the of the cylinders, right? Am I right? On the printing. Yes, yeah, some of course are. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, well, when you when you look back here, uh, you can see easily uh, why uh, uh, those things happen. The double printing, of course, it's uh, it may be a, jo a jolt in the paper. Or it may be the paper which has been presented twice. Mm. It, it, it may happen through different uh, through different ways. But the uh, when the blade does not scrap correctly the the cylinder, you may have some uh, uh, something which is still there and uh, which is going to be transferred on the paper, um, or the uh, the indent on the cylinder. Uh, were dirty, didn't take ink, so many, many things can happen. Uh, and if the process has not been done correctly, you, you, it may induce many errors. Hmm. Great. That's how you get uh, errors. Uh, I, I'm surprised actually uh, Delarue at this time actually uh, very sloppy appear very sloppy with the printing. They usually are pretty good. Yes, this period of time, you, you can see many, many things like that. Mm. Uh, I didn't check for the later years, but I think after that, uh, the print and after that, the printing were made also by uh, uh, photo, um, uh, the, the, by new machines. They were not really cylinder. Uh -huh. They were digital reproduction. In uh -huh. a digital reproduction, you, you are prone to less error. Ah. You got basically two, two ways of printing. You got one with a cylinder mm -hmm. and uh, with, a no, with a modern machine, uh, you, you send your file uh, to the computer and it, it prints anything you want and there is no reason to have your own. <laughs> While at that time it was more 
uh, more physical yeah. than cryptic. Yeah. Okay, good. Anybody got any comments? Philippe, did you have to check many examples to find this, or do you just have a few and there they were? Well, it, it's it's a, it's a process, a long time process. I had that on my albums, and uh, I had to check on uh, yes on, on several. Many I wouldn't say so because I don't have many of those. Uh -huh. But uh, it was a long process. Yes. And I, I have some more errors I didn't, I didn't pick up because they were not that interesting. But, yes. All right, good. Um, I think uh, uh, Richard has, uh, Richard Whittington has something to show from, uh, I think, we, I believe, Chris Norton. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, a very quick one from Chris. Fortunately, can't be here today, but uh, he asked me to raise this matter. So I'll share screen now, hopefully. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, here is uh, what. He asked me to present on his behalf. Um, and I noticed, unfortunately, that Nick's not around, but I'll ask him directly uh, later. So here, uh, the printing error on the KG6, which is the post-war $2 value, uh, where you can see the red ink, the characters, and the uh, monetary amount is shifted quite significantly yeah. to the left. And then he noticed that this error also occurred in an item in the Richard Chan sale on a $5, which was Requisition K, is the post-war, of course. And uh, a similar kind of error occurred there. Uh, so he just put this forward. He's not sure which requisition the $2 came for, so he was hoping that Nick Hale would be, would be uh, on board uh, to, because I'm sure he would know. Um, but I'll deal with that directly with him, as I said. That, that was it. I don't know whether anybody else has items like this. Mm. <clears throat> Yes, spectacular. Right. Okay, good. Uh, thank you, uh, Richard, and uh, of course, um, Chris, uh, for showing this. Right. So, um, I have to say goodbye now, ladies bye. and gentlemen. So, I'll see you next time. Okay. Yes. Bye bye. Nice day, John. Yeah. Me too. Good night. Okay, yes, have a, have a nice sleep, Sarah. Okay, maybe see you next month. Yes, thank Hi, you. Hi, Sarah. Uh, thanks, Susan. <laughs> okay, so, um, right. Uh, I think I, I, want to, I want to show something. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, it's just a purpuri or various things spanning over 150 years. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, you are, some of you uh, um, might have known this word, irari humanum est. You know, so if you have done Latin at your uh, school, uh, it's a famous saying by Seneca, human error. Right, so human error. Now, the uh, first item I'd like to show is, of course, that's human error using the, the date stamp, which is the web type 513 uh, with the index C reverse, which I'll come to that, uh, struck in red, but obviously it should be in black. 
And, um, and the interesting point is not only the date stamp is with a reverse C, the Hong Kong page, which is properly in, in proper red color, is also in C. And, and also when, when it was corrected, you can see some bit of black. Obviously, they clean out the red and use black ink to, to strike it on the back again. It all has a reverse C. So none of this time, actually, uh, the, the clerk has changed the index letter. Perhaps it is maybe another clerk taking this, the CDS into use and uh, just to identify his, uh, maybe his, his, his position as an assistant clerk or, or temp. You know, he, he, uh, he uh, deliberately uh, invert the, uh, or you call it reverse the index letter C. So, and obviously, and there are lots of wrong with this. Uh, first of all, that the rate is wrong. Okay, so this is um, actually wrongly rated as a half ounce letter by Marseille, um, uh, uh, which was uh, six, if you, if you work it out, it's, uh, it should be uh, a six pence, a plus six pence French, six pence British, and, and, and it becomes 12 pence, which are shilling. It was actually crossed out, and because it was uh, actually it's a quarter ounce letter, so it, it was actually the, the French transit rate was actually three fourpence instead of sixpence. So it became actually ninepence. So it was ninepence paid, rewritten over here. So you can actually see it's quite clearly that uh, you know, there's a bit of black and a bit of red. And obviously, the red has been uh, applied in error and then uh, cleaned out and used black ink, but there's still some a bit of residue uh, you can see on the back of the cover. So the next one, again, the, the Hong Kong paid seems to be in all sorts of different colors. Uh, this one is in black on the reverse on the envelope. Uh, normally, uh, obviously it should be in red, but this one actually uh, the, the clerk to pick it up and then thought it was, a, it was a normal date stamp and then put it on the back and they realized it's wrong, but you know, never actually bothered to actually do anything about it. So, uh, so that was, a, that was a, 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 in black color. So again, it shows that maybe it's another, I don't know, maybe an assistant clerk or something, the rate is also wrong. Um, uh, uh, the letter was actually sent via Marseille, but uh, it was that the rate was actually uh, by Southampton. So you can actually see that it, it was actually, uh, the, the, the sender actually paid, had, a, had a discount from the post office, the correct rate. Uh, should have been two shillings uh, tuppence instead of one shilling eight. Right now, the next one again. <laughs> this one is in blue Hong Kong page. Uh, in, in, uh, this as used as a, a rifle uh, a chop on the back of a, of a, a letter, you know, from from London to Hong Kong. Uh, and it's interesting. Is it's in blue. Right, and this is this is more interesting uh, with actually double cancellation. Um, I think at first, um, it, it, as you know, that this there is a convention rate, uh, 1867 convention rate to USA only paying uh, eight cent uh, for a half ounce letter, and um, but uh, the you have to apply uh, Hong Kong pay or CDS in red. Uh, on, on the front of the, of the, of the cover and uh, next to the stamp. And, but obviously, uh, and somebody actually used the wrong uh, CDS uh, in the, in the Hong Kong CDS in black and put it there. And then, um, uh, and, then, and then overstruck with the red Hong Kong pay or CDS just to cover the mistake. It's exactly the same date, uh, but at that time in 1872, uh, all Hong Kong CDS should have been applied on the back of the letter instead of the front. It's only when Hong Kong entered the UPU in, a, in 1877 when they start stamping the date stamp on the front of the cover. So this is quite interesting, uh, uh, a mistake and then correction of the mistake. Right, now this uh, one, Andrew, very, very sorry. common. Uh, Andrew, Andrew so, yes. sorry. Yes. Uh, well, Bad word to the to the to the to the Hong Kong page. See this? Yeah. Uh, as I recorded, uh, for those uh, 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 
uh, transpacific mail uh, under the U.S. Uh, Hong Kong uh, Postal Convention. Uh, the stamp will be cancelled by B62 uh, and also uh, with the red uh, Hong Kong pay all hand, uh, hand stamp. Yeah. The back, the cover back will not have any yeah. further, 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 further right. CPS of Hong Kong. That's right. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Right. Therefore, I totally a double mistake for that. I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. So this is this is quite common. I'm sure that if you collect postage dues or postcards, you will have lots of these things. Uh, you know, uh, there there were actually two rates. One is the called the postcard rate, and the other is actually a printed matter rate. The printed matter rate is actually two cents, and the postcard rate is four cents. And it, it all depends on how the, the post office clerk interpret the item, whether the, your postcard, whether it should be sent by printed matter or by uh, as a postcard. What, what actually uh, happened, if you write something on the, on the front of the card, uh, I, think, I think it's five, more than five or seven words, then, then it becomes a, a, a postcard, so you have to pay for that. And uh, if you only one or two words or a few words already printed word like that, Hong Kong, and this one's Hong Kong, uh, uh, and then it, it's, you, this actually qualifies for a, a, a printed matter rate, which is two cents. So these two cards are actually a, a properly franked, uh, absolutely correct, but obviously somebody um, uh, put the T mark, this is a Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, somebody put a T mark there, and probably uh, maybe a senior clerk spotted it, and this one actually crossed out the postcard, uh, the word postcard, but this one didn't, and then uh, just crossed out the T. So it, it, these were actually sent without uh, any any sorts of postage due. So uh, this one is more interesting. This one, the mistake was not realized until until it reached London. It was or it was actually sent to Wales, but it actually passed through London, and uh, you can see actually. FB, foreign branch. So the, the T and the rate here, which is uh, one over 10 centim, was annulled by the foreign branch in London. So uh, this was actually sent as a postage due item. Uh, but obviously it's a postcard, but actually you can see a lot more, well, I suppose it's a printed words rather than actually written words. So they say, uh, okay, well, it's, it's you can send as a printed matter item at the two cent absolutely correct rate. And they annulled the uh, the, uh, the, the, the the postage due marking. Right now, and uh, uh, just change the change the subject from postal history to uh, to stamps. And this is actually uh, something that I um, I picked up at the post office uh, in eight, 1981. Um, you know when when the uh, the royal wedding uh, stamps the Prince Charles and Diana. Uh, <clears throat> came out, and um, you know, to my surprise, if you look at it very carefully, there's actually a broken crown variety, which is constant because I've got, I've got several uh, strips like that. Uh, but uh, I, I tried uh, written to SG to Stanley Gibbons, and uh, uh, I think Stanley Gibbons because it's such maybe such a minor error or something they totally ignore it. But you can actually find it quite easily if you have a strip like that. And there, there's still here is the stamp, and you can see the nick and the crown, which is which is quite constant. Uh, uh, Andrew, is it uh, is it this error constant on each uh, position? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Just on this stamp. On this stamp. This stamp, but for for other for other. Uh, no, 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 no. Just on twenty cent. Yeah. On twenty cents on this particular position. Yes. Every sheet. Every sheet. Well, no, I can't say all the sheets, but you know, I, I have something like uh, five or six sheets with this error. So it's, it's got maybe it could have been a, a um, well, actually, I is a question that if you if you have the stamp, uh, you you could you could kindly check whether the, the crown is complete in your sheet. I mean, it could have been a, a, a scratch in the uh, in the plate, or it could have been some foreign body that fallen onto the onto the printing plate. But uh, you know, so far I, I have about something like 10, 10 pairs of these all with the broken ground. So I'm pretty sure it's constant. 
you know, you, you were for that for the whole shit. <laughs> mm. Right. Okay. okay. So next one. Ah, we go back to the uh, postmark again. Uh, this is very interesting. This is uh, a branch office uh, in Hong Kong outside of the uh, in the Hong Kong island called Cloud View Road, which is a road uh, above uh, North Point. And uh, there was, uh, I think there still is a post office there, a small post office, um, I think ne next to a supermarket. And uh, it, it so happened that, uh, you know, some, some collectors uh, went up there one day and, and tried to obtain these uh, rubber chops. And usually, uh, and they, these were introduced in, in, the, uh, in the, in the six, six, late, late 60s and 70s. Uh, for sending uh, uh, soft parcels to China. And, um, and Cloud Real World, uh, I can't remember whether it was open then, but it certainly had two types of chops. You know, so one type of like that with, with, a, with, a, with a bigger Hong Kong. <clears throat> and, and the second one, which was with, with, a, with, a, with a narrower Hong Kong. So this was the, uh, this was the old one, uh, which uh, I think it later disappeared. And this is actually the same type this act, this is actually a replacement of this one. But it's got some got serious letters. But if you look closely, I mean that one actually, this is the, the common one they used, but the, there's a second one um, that they, 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 they could use. And this one's got the error of R O R D instead of so R O A D, they is it's got the inscription, it's got the R O R D error. And uh, the postmaster was duly informed of the error. And, uh, and he withdrew the, the CDS. But you thought that you know, he would have thrown it away or ordered a new one. But instead, later on, he actually uh, 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 replaced the R with an A. You can see it's exactly the same CDS. This is 86, this is 89, 88, I think, 88 or 89, 88, I think. And, uh, and they, they just took out the R and stick an A back in. So it's now correctly spelled. As Cloud Root Road. Okay, so these are the small parcel uh, canceller. Ex okay. Excuse me, Andrew. Mm? For that, uh, it is a rubber stamp? Yeah, it's a rubber stamp, yeah. Then to take so, out one. Yeah, just take one out one. It one, would, probably would have been easier to destroy one. it and order a new one. <laughs> but maybe this is quite new. I mean, this is, it, this does look like, looks like a new brother. This looks, looks more worn than this one. And maybe uh, for the sake of economy, or, <laughs> uh, or, or maybe to cover up his mistake, uh, he just he just gouged out the, the R and, and insert the letter A instead. You can see that the A is different actually from the rest of the of, of the, the cancel. I don't know where they're still there, probably gone. I mean, you know, so many years later now, so it must have it must have been replaced. I understand that most, uh, I think if, if, if not all the, of the branch offices still have these rubber chops, but they are now actually mostly, I would say exclusively used for say canceling uh, receipts and things and not for stamps. Not easy, well, replace the, replace the <laughs> A for R, you need to remove the R carefully. Yeah, so it's rubber. By, <laughs> by, 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 by go and I'll fix it. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, it, it looks it looks it looks different. I mean, it looks very very clean and small. Anyhow. Yeah, the, the font is different. The font. Yeah, the font is, is different too. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So the next one is this is a very famous Morrison Hill Hong Hong era. You know where the, again is the is a rubber 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 chop. You know with with a Hong Hong spelling. You know instead of Hong Kong, you know, they have this one, uh, and. Uh, and Morrison Hill has his, his fair share of errors in, in his, his, his cancels. And the, the other famous one also in the same year, I know it's 19, 1994, 1986, much earlier, is called the Morrison Hill. You know, they, they, uh, they, 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 they put an extra I between the, between the S and the O of Morrison. And, and it becomes this one. It wasn't spotted for a long time until some, some stamp collector uh, walked in and uh, asked for a parcel cancellation and uh, the sharp eye collector spotted the error and they informed the postmaster duly. And then of course, after uh, maybe it's only, you see it's a difference of the, of the date. Uh, it's only uh, 12th of June, 28th of June, the same year. And uh, the, the postmaster gouged out the eye. 
So it becomes Morris on Hill. <laughs> it's an ad hoc one. Obviously, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the, the stamp collector was not satisfied with this, with this uh, ad hoc measure. So he complained again. Then later on uh, in August, a new, uh, uh, maybe, maybe even earlier because it looks a bit worn already, um, a, a new cancel was ordered and with the correct spelling. And, and then of course, in eight, these um, rubber cancel uh, didn't last very long uh, because the, of the, uh, the, a lot of pressure applied on the parcel or maybe using the wrong mixture of ink uh, you, you use uh, uh, organic solvent ink, uh, the rubber tend to distort pretty quickly. So, and it was, it was replaced in 1889, with a different version, which is, which is, well, it's just, it's just same style, but uh, it's obviously it's a different cancer. Okay. Andrew, yes. Andrew, uh, th there is an, Era on your last page, <laughs> the year of Morrison Hong Kong should be eight, 1984. Not oh, 1984. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, yes, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, double error. <laughs> error of error. Error of error. Okay. Error, error. okay. So next, uh, this, is, uh, this is a classic. Uh, um, as, as you know, that all the, all the post offices, uh, the branch offices of Hong Kong, they, they have the steel cancellor and they all end up with the name of the post office and the Hong, Hong Kong uh, 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 yeah, uh, following the name of the post office, uh, just to indicate it's uh, the Hong Kong post office. But when Kuang Hua Street, Kuang Hua Street is, is a street um, uh, uh, next, I think adjacent to the, Kuang, the famous Kuang Hua Hospital in Kowloon in the in, in Yamati, is it Yamati? Yes. Yeah, and, at, the, at the back of the, 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 the hospital, yeah. That's right. So they opened a, a branch office there because there were, there were a lot of mail uh, from, the, from the hospitals and, and the surrounding areas. And uh, they actually ordered the wrong postmark. This is actually steel cancellation with the post office. And then uh, these were all first day cancels. Uh, 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 aside from these two, which were obtained a little bit later, uh, but the one, two, three, four, five, all first day cancellations available on the day of the opening of the post office. And, and that, at that time, actually nobody noticed that people were too busy uh, obtaining all the different uh, cancels, et cetera, making uh, first day covers. And nobody actually noticed there was, a, there was an error in, in, in the postmark. Uh, later on, uh, I think some one or two collectors actually phoned up and, and told the postmaster that they, there's something wrong with the, with the cancel. And then, of course, by comparison with the other branch office, they know that it, 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 it should be, it should, this should, the post office should, be, should spell Hong Kong instead of post office. So, so they actually um, uh, 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 made some correction and order a new set with the Hong Kong uh, following the post, uh, the, the, the name of the, the branch office. But during that time, uh, there were two new issues. Uh, there were new, the, one is the community chest uh, on, on the 30th of November, 1988, and then the Chinese New Year, the snake, and the January 18. And to, to save embarrassment, they actually made a rubber uh, reproduction of the stamp. Uh, these are actually rubber uh, uh, and one day only. Uh, a date stamp with, with, the, with the date of the issue of, of, the, of the new stamp. Uh, there should be a 30th of November, which is the community chest, uh, first day of issue. And then there's another one with the 18th of January, 8, 1989. They are fixed date cancels and made a rubber use only for one day. And later on, uh, uh, about four months later, uh, they made a new set. Uh, the new set arrived from maybe from the probably from the UK uh, with, the, with, the, with the correct spelling of the Kuang Street, Hong Kong. Right, now this is probably something you've never seen before because this is actually from the Crown Agent archives. Uh, uh, the, 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 the steel date stamps uh, were ordered from a manufacturer. Uh, I don't know, maybe, actually it says here, Wolverhampton. Oh, no, no, it's actually, this, this is actually the, the name. I, I don't know uh, where, which probably is a secret, you know, where, where they were made, you know, just in case you raided them and, and stole all the CDS. But anyway, 
um, you know, to um, to the to the manufacturer of the date stamp, Kun uh, Tong doesn't mean anything to them. I mean, you know, they were making date stamps from all the British Commonwealth countries. I mean, some with pretty weird spelling, or, or you know, which uh, totally does not make sense to to the to people who made those. So they actually made the mistake of actually uh, uh, saying Kun uh, Kun Tong instead of uh, K W U N T O N G, which is the correct spelling. It, that's in 1958, as well before the opening of the Kun Tong Post Office. So they were actually making some uh, the, some stamps before the opening. Like for example, this is from Chiang Shan from Peng Chao, uh, Taiyo, Aberdeen, etc. Okay, so they made all these just in case, and and the Kai Tak as well. So that that's where is Kai Tak one? Huh? Yes. Where is Kai Tak one? Yeah, probably on a different page. Yes, which I didn't show. No, actually, Kai Tak one was already in use at that time, if my memory yes. serves correctly. Uh, not sure. Okay. Right. So later on, if you see the date, November six, November seventeen, you know that that's uh, that's another page with. Uh, the, 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 you see, sometimes they want to uh, three, four, five on a different date, on a different page, okay, with the different numbers, um, okay, still with the wrong spelling, okay, three, four, five, so one, two, three, four, five, the five CDS from Kun Tong without a W, and later, of course, they corrected it, um, corrected it, and, and probably sent all those back to the, to the manufacturer to be destroyed, and then you can see this one, two, three, Four, five, yeah. You see the different style. You can see it's different style. The four is in the middle, and then the numbers are at the back, are following Hong Kong. It's actually uh, sorry. This yeah, this is different. And this one five here, okay. So the Kun Tong Post Office was finally opened on the on December the third, nineteen sixty two. So this was the last last set that they made. It was correct, and then they sent it over to Hong Kong. Okay, there's another one, uh, San Hui. Uh, I don't know whether this is intentional or unintentional, but San Hui means new town. It doesn't mean anything. So in fact, we have a post office called Twin Moon San Hui, which is in Twin Moon, okay? The, the, the new Twin Moon new town, there was an old part of Twin Moon, and then, and then there's a, a new part of Twin Moon called Twin Moon San Hui. Uh, so I, I'm pretty sure that that is probably I mean, it may, may or may not be, but anyway, there's never a post office called San Hui in Hong Kong. Maybe this, they, they, they did it wrong and, and then the, uh, they left out the Twin Moon in front and just have San Hui in 1961. It seems 1961, 67, it's, 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 it's a, there's a six years different. So it may not be, I mean, maybe San Hui from somewhere. And that's, that's my guess. And then this is, <laughs> this is a very famous one. Uh, Hong Kong Thai Tech, you know, with, instead of Thai Tech, and this one is Hong Kong K O N K Thai Tech Airport. So it's a double error there. So it actually, it actually says return to E and B. Now I'm not sure what E and B means. I mean, is it the name of the of the of the manufacturer? I don't know. But uh, that's uh, obviously very wrong with it, with it. With it. Um, so in 1962, they go back and then uh, did another one and asked for another set. And they got it one and two, which is, yeah, replacing that. But they still got it wrong. Now they got the Hong Kong correct now with the KONG, but still with Thai Tech. So, and then of course, the, uh, ah, you see, they, then now they have the Chun Moon San Hui. The Chun Moon San Hui. Maybe, maybe San Hui really means Chun Moon San Hui. Uh, and then finally, they send it that back and they correct it as Kai Tak. So this is actually is a definitive uh, postmark sent to the uh, to the airport post office, which was opened uh, on first of November nineteen sixty two in the departure hall. The the, the Kai Tak the first Kai, the Kai Tak number one was actually used in the airmail center, which was not which was an a, a, like a like out, like the, it's a different part of the building and it was not open to the public. Uh, so, so this is actually inside the airport uh, uh, building. So uh, now this one is the is the, the Wan Chai. 
you know, which is a single ring mistakenly uh, 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 made in a single ring instead of a double ring cancel. And, uh, and it's also returned uh, to be destroyed. It should be CCS IMS uh, received return to, it should be MS40. So MS40 presumably is the type of CDS, maybe it's a double ring CDS, the, the, the style of the CDS that uh, they talked about. Okay, I think that's that's all I have got uh, for the time being. Uh, and, uh, Andrew, you, that is a very fascinating archive. Yes. Did, did you get a copy from the archive, or do you? Uh, yes. Own the, oh, I don't have the original, of course. <laughs> no, these you can actually see them in in the post office. It's it's available in the uh, London Post Office uh, Museum. Uh, it's mm. actually pages and pages of these. Uh, hence, I only, of course, I only cropped the part with Hong Kong, but the, the sheets would contain other post offices from the British Commonwealth. Uh, yeah, they, they are available from the, from the, uh, from the uh, uh, post office uh, museum uh, in London. Uh, okay, so Andrew, so... In London, you can go in and check it out. Yeah. Andrew, these sheets are now in, in, in UK, not in yeah. Hong Kong, right? No, 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 no. Okay. This is just a copy of the sheet. <laughs> they're, in the, they're, they're in the Post Office Museum, which is yeah. near Covent Garden. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that right? No, near Russell, not far, but near the British Museum, near Russell Square. Um, and the, the only problem with, with it is that they've been... Uh, some of the records have, uh, quote, disappeared. Yeah. They're not, they're not complete, not but complete. there's a lot, a lot of stuff there. Yeah, either, well, I mean, the rumors said that either they've been stolen or they've been destroyed. Uh, some of it has been destroyed uh, uh, you know, during the war, during the, the, uh, the Second World War, when, when the German- so, uh, I think, Yeah, it seems to be. Uh, I was intending to go back because they have quite a lot. What they have, you could look at straight away. Yeah. Are the yeah. are the copies? Mm. But they have the originals yeah. Yeah. in the archive, which they have to go and get. Yeah. Uh, so you have to do that in advance. Yeah. But um, I was intending to do that, but I mean, it's been closed. It's been closed yeah. for uh, because of COVID. Right? About a year. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the to-do list. Yeah, you see, it's a mixture of of, uh, of of CDS from different places. This one, Bahamas, and this is um, Southampton, Manchester. It's or, or it's just a, basically it's just like a book with all these squares, and uh, you just you just put the uh, uh, it's just a record. It's like a bit like the requisition books. That's one. That's one. Yeah. Anyway, so it's fascinating stuff if you if you do that kind of. I mean, some of the some of the, so the maybe some cancel like for example this parcel. Hong Kong 11, they've probably never seen it before, probably never used, probably sent to Hong Kong, but there was, it was just kept in the post office, uh, safe and, and not used. Uh, but but uh, it, it is really, you know, the original uh, branch office council's research uh, place, you know, where, where you want to go. Anyway, okay, so, so that's all from me. I believe I want to stop sharing and I believe Sir Simon has got some some interesting items to present, uh, maybe. Oh, Angel, Angel. Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, in the June newsletter, there's another day stamp. There's uh, some Sam Shui post office. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so maybe uh, yeah, yeah. I members would like to look better. Yeah, yeah there, was, there, was the, yeah, there was a mistake with the uh, Sam Shui uh, PO dot or something like that. Yeah. Yes. With, with a dot. That's very interesting also. Yeah. Is that the one on eBay? Yeah. Yeah, it could have been, yeah. Yeah. I think somebody somebody showed a pair of a Sam Shui Po with a, the with a dot. So it's actually it's two different CDS instead of uh, instead of the same one with the, with a dot uh, gouged out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yes, to you, Simon. See my screen? Yeah, 
you can okay, see us. Right, there. let me start. Um, first part, I'm going to show a few odd covers, and then the second part will be more on thematic, uh, the Hong Hong. And uh, when Sam was presenting, I thought I needed to skip my part, but uh, well, uh, then he turned up something different, so I can continue. Okay, let's start with some 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 odd covers or cards. Uh, this one, uh, when you just look at it uh, briefly, you may not be able to see any error, but uh, yeah. But if you look carefully, it is a O one year O one on a King Edward stamp. Mm. Uh, which have not been issued yet. In fact, the year in fact was uh, 1910. So the digit uh, 10 oh, has been reversed as 01. Transpose it, that means? Yeah. Okay, the second one I thought I have shown it uh, during the registration <laughs> session the, the Kong Kong label. Oh, yes. I think did did Engel show one before with the Hong Kong label? Yeah, I, I've shown it during the, the registrate which is which the mails uh, yeah. session. Is, is it ago. you or Engel that show this the same label? So sorry. Is it you or or is it me? Engel me. Yeah. It's you. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Me. This one uh, was from Sayers, so there must be something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the uh, 11 a.m. is turned up to be a 1L. one L. I'm not sure whether it's a time slot error or just some ink loss. Maybe it is 11 dot. Yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. 11 dot, <laughs> then hyphen. Over ink 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one is uh yeah maybe it's quite well long um the the the, the first couple of the centenary issue um tie from Tai O uh, sixty two inverted as uh, ah, you see you right. show eleven dot eleven dot here yeah mm. I I think the previous one is uh, for sure is eleven dot not I L yeah right yeah possibly yeah. Okay, um, some registration label errors. This one, Chachi Moi, <laughs> and <laughs> with the error MUI, MU1 is our MUI. Well, uh, in fact, registration label errors are, are, are not commonly found, yeah, because mm. it, it, maybe it is not commonly noticed uh, or unrecorded, or uh, when the appeal of uh, the, the staff. Uh, uh, saw it, then they, they quickly retreat it. Okay, this is the Japanese occupation era, and see whether you can spot the era. You can see the Kowloon at the bottom when the date is upright, uh. and the stars are at the top. When you turn it 180 degrees, then Kowloon is normal, but the date is inverted. Yeah, so inverted date. Yes, and on the same day, I got another cover, uh, which is not registered, but just normal, and having the same date, same Kowloon cancellation, mm. same error. It's here than, than the previous one. And uh, yeah, I would say errors during the Japanese occupation are commonly found. Yeah, the year twenty, which is nineteen forty-five, the Japanese has become very undisciplined due to the war situation at that time. Okay, um, the foreign field slides is about a fancy era, Hong Kong, and uh, in fact, uh, in the Hong Kong. Stamp market, uh, the Hong Kong based stamps uh, are quite beloved by the Chinese collectors, maybe because of, of, of this Chinese nickname. And uh, so far, uh, a few Hong Kong based stamps have been recorded. The first one 
uh, quite well known the 1945 counter Hong Kong two base stamps type A and type B. And then 1957, the Shenwan Hong Kong index number four, uh, 1953, Shamshai Po Hong Kong index number eight. Say one whole Hong Kong and uh, which is a plastic uh, uh, single ring uh, base stamp for a small packet. And then the 1984 Morrison Hong Kong, uh, which Andrew has just uh, shown to us. Okay, the first one about Carlton Hong Kong. On 1945, September 28, Carlton Post Office was opened at 10 a.m. In fact, uh, has done some studies on, on, on the Hong Kong era, on the current Hong Kong era, and uh, he has written on his collection, which is now in the Hong Kong uh, Museum of History. Uh, he stated that some covers dated uh, September 28, 1945 of Hong Kong and grafted as Hong Kong. The era occurred in the current post office on the first day that it began to function after the liberation. It was discovered in B days after the first change of the time slot. Well, he, he mentioned that the time slot was changed at 11 o'clock from 10 dot a.m. to noon. And that means the era was used for one hour or a little bit more than one hour only. And in Peter's collection, he has drawn some diagrams and clearly shown the differences of type A and type B. And scanned it as. And then I superimposed the images. And then you can see that they do not overlap. That means. These are uh, 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 two distinctive cancellations. Okay, let's talk more about type A. Type A is commonly of the four in years log four five. You can see the length of the four is quite short. And covers of counter Hong Kong with type A cancellation. I would say are uh, of different cover size, uh, of different addresses or addresses. And the, the positions of the stamps are fixed are in fact quite different. Let's see the examples. Yeah, well, in fact, uh, in fact, both, both of, of the collectors at that time has uh, produce two or, 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 or just a few covers. In fact. This one is quite odd, a very long cover. And uh, yeah, I, I recorded only one, one, one example only. Address it to someone at Yamati Police Station. And then some other examples of the type A. These two are addressed to uh, the Portuguese uh, consulate at Pure Liberty Avenue. And these two are with Chinese characters as their dress and from China Times, uh, uh, printed covers from China Times. In fact, you can see that the stamps used, in fact, were not available at the post office at that time. I'm not sure where he got the stamps. Maybe he, he, he brought over the stamps to the post office to, to have them canceled, or uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe maybe from someone in, in the post of afterwards. And these two covers, in fact, are very special and, and currently is, is in the Peter Shetz collection of, uh, it, uh, with the Hong Kong Museum of History. These are the two uh, noon uh, type A covers that I've recorded. And they are addressed to the same person uh, of Chinese name Zhang Yichu uh, with an address in Kowloon Shamshui Po, Boundary Street. 
basically all other uh, color hot hot colors, no matter type A or type B, are 10 AF, except these two. Okay, let's go to type B. This is the diagram uh, drawn by Peter Sheck. And uh, you can see the long leg of the four of the years long, 45. And type B covers, most of them are of the same size and the layout of the adhesives or the configurations, I would say, are quite similar. And all of them are having time slot of 10 AM only, like this one. The application of stamps on all, uh, on most of these covers are similar. Having the eight cents on, on, on the top left corner and then the five cents and Henry on the top right corner and the two cents on the bottom left corner. And this is another special example uh, addressed to uh, the same uh, uh, person, I would say, that I mentioned uh, with the type A noon time slot covers, Zhang Yi Chu. And in fact, this one is in English, YC Cheng, but the address is the same, although in English. Uh, some other examples of these covers. Some without the address, some with address affixed, but then removed. And then a few one adjusted to a person called Leung Chek Tim, Kowloon Post Office Hong uh, Kowloon. And in fact, uh, from the Blue Book of uh, Hong Kong government, uh, 1940, Mr. Leung Chek Tim was ranked postal clerk grade six in 1940. I'm not sure uh, what is his grade or his rank when the office was opened again in 1945. Some other examples of the type B covers. Okay, these two should be, of, should be the same. And because the right one uh, was from a uh, uh, catalog and the illustration of the catalog has just covered uh, the, the, the lower part of the, the right cover with another cover, so uh, only the, the top part. So I suppose the original one should be the, it's the same as, as the left one. And address it to John B. Shaw, which is the quite uh, famous Chinese collector of, of the uh, CPA. Uh, you can see that the, the, the plate number of, of the five cents and Henry stamp are, 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 are very close. One is 74262 and the other one is 74265. And uh, this is another odd cover of uh, type B, uh, but uh, with, uh, but on a, a long, long envelope. These two are addressed to David Fernandez, Kowloon CPO. And uh, David Fernandez was ranked postal clerk grade two in 1940. And I'm not sure whether he was the postmaster of Kowloon CPO in 1945. According to Peter Sheck, the error was discovered at 11 when the time stop was changed to noon, and then uh, covers with all current Hong Kong CDS were recorded at noon and then afterwards at 3 p.m. Okay, uh, the below uh, statements are, I would say, hearsay, hearsay statements. Around 50 years ago, someone, I don't want to disclose his name, but I'll just call him Mr. M. And in fact, um, Mr. M told me that uh, the postmaster of Kowloon PO at the time when, 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 when uh, Mr. M told me the story, and in fact, at that postmaster was his customer and also a longtime friend of him and his father. Well, in fact, he and his father are still having a very famous stamp shop in Chim Chak Choi, and you, you can guess what what kind of hinting about. And he called that person, Postmaster Lee or Leo. Well, in fact, I, I have forgotten uh, uh, because my memory on, on that uh, in fact has faded. So that's why I. Uh,
But let, let, let's, let's call, call that person, Mr. Learn. Uh, M. Okay, you can still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, M told me that Learn was on duty. Um, and he used a new CDS to service at the counter. And of course, some collectors were producing the covers and some, 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 some were lining up the queue to, to, to post some mails. And then it was soon reported that the day stamp was having an error of Hong Kong. And, and yeah, maybe it, it, it was about uh, 11 o'clock or, or when, when he needed to change the, the time slot. And he immediately, immediately removed that day stamp from the counter. And in fact, there were two new day stamps in Kowloon Post Office on that date. He took out the other new one. He examined it the postmark impression and was again astonished to see that both of them were having the same era of Hong Kong. And uh, well, uh, this, this one is uh, took out an old CTS, the, 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 the Kowloon Hong Kong, Hong, the normal Hong Kong, Kowloon Hong Kong CTS used it be, before the war and put it back to the calendar for continuation of business. And Interestingly, um, Mr. M uh, told me that uh, Leung, um, he himself uh, went to a shop nearby, purchased a small amount of blank envelopes uh, in, in Canton, this is something like that. Uh, and then he went back to Kowloon Post Office and produced it, uh, some uh, Hong Kong covers at the back before he sent back the two uh, era that they sent back to the, 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 the GPO. And uh, at the time when M was telling me uh, these things, uh, he uh, lived in his home county in China. And uh, in fact, I was together with KK Ho, and uh, when, when we uh, heard the same story, and we immediately offered it to Mr. M to get in contact with Leung, uh, and trying to invite Leung to Yum Cha in Hong Kong when he was uh, back to Hong Kong. But in fact, we were refused by Mr. M, saying that uh, you know, we, we, we couldn't, uh, it, it, it was difficult to get contact with Uh, we could not follow up on that uh, anymore afterwards. It's a pity. And uh, with that uh, story in mind, I, well, I'm having more questions in mind. Uh, was that postal from Mr. Lanchak team? Uh, the same one uh, that Mr. M uh, was mentioning. And uh, was Mr. Lanchak team promoted to the postmaster of Kowloon in later years in and any information. And in 1945, uh, was the postmaster of Kowloon called David Fernandez. In fact, David Fernandez uh, has two Hong Kong covers. And uh, did he produce the covers before or after he realized the error? How many staff were in County PO during that morning? And how many of them knew about the Hong Kong based stamp era? Uh, apparently, the type B covers um, with those were produced under the same batch. Uh, where did learn buy those blank envelopes? And then I'm not sure where, where, where could he uh, buy blank envelopes nearby in Chim Sa uh, were, were there any stationary shops? I don't know. And, and, and what is the exact quantity? And, and although I, I was told that the quantity is, uh, is, is around or in fact less than 20, but well, uh, I, 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 I could not verify. Uh, 
purposes. Because uh, apparently those a few couples uh, were a lot of the same configuration as, as those uh, as that batch, where they produced it by favor, by loan or by some other postal card with Kowloon before the data were sent back to TPO, or uh, were, 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 were those couples canceled, in fact, canceled by the customer at the counter? And were all the type A couples, well, in fact, type A couples, in a certain way, uh, is less than the number of type B couples. Were all those type A couples made by customers at the counter uh, uh, during that one hour? And after the two early couples were sent back to GPO, were the senior staff at GPO produce some covers posthumously. These are my questions. Uh, your, your help is definitely needed and helpful. Uh, if you can send some images to me if you have the images and uh, many thanks in advance on that. Okay, uh, let's go uh, to- uh, Sorry, Han, before, before oh, okay. you leave that one, I noticed uh, because I'll forget later because it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, one of the covers that you showed mm -hmm. had a requisition B for cent on it. Okay, I'll let you go to that. Requisition B, okay. This cover, the four cent, I do not think was issued to the public at that time. They were they were in Hong Kong, but they were not used. Oh, the four cents. Yep. Type A. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I... So that indicates that it was someone inside the post office mm -hmm. contriving covers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we we we, we can uh, yeah further discuss on that. Uh, and in fact, because, I'll you information about all the steps. Because you'll you'll as you mentioned, the people who were working in the post office, mm -hmm. many of those covers are requisition. Many of there were mm -hmm. where they were, mm -hmm. but I've never seen the four cents. Requisition B, which was sent out to Hong Kong before the Japanese arrived, but was so never, be, yeah, never it, used. It sent, it should be extent, right? No, four cent requisition B. Four it was cent not, used, not used in 1945, as far as I know, at that time. You mean this one, right? Yeah. You see the top left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a four cent, right? Is it a four cent or an eight cent? I, I think, I think it's an eight cent. Oh, then, then please ignore my stupid comment. The the eight cent requisition B was, of course, in general use after the war. A question there. By 10 o'clock that, that day, they were using both cancel, the one with Hong Kong and the one with Hong Kong, or only the one with Hong Kong? Yeah, I think that that's another question. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm not sure whether they, they were using only one, one day stamp or two day stamps. One with Hong Kong and the other with, with the, the normal Hong Kong one. Yeah, because in, in a young, in the catalog, he, he, uh, Yang illustrates also a Hong Kong uh, cancel at mm -hmm. 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So apparently they may, they may have been using the two cancels. Yeah, well, in fact, because uh, uh, Hong Kong uh, uh, is more famous than, than, than the normal Hong Kong. So I, I didn't notice, or, or in fact, I, I, I didn't collect the, the normal uh, counter Hong Kong covers. With uh, the normal counter Hong Kong of 10 a.m. 
in fact, my rack of all my, my samples, uh, one is noon and the other one is this 3, 3 p.m. Yeah. I, I've never seen uh, Hong Kong, Kowloon, Hong Kong, 10 a.m. Okay, okay. Yeah, look at, look at Yang, you will see the distribution. Okay. Hong Kong. Hong with Kong, a K, with a K. Hong Kong with a K at 10, at 10 a.m. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right. Okay, so uh, a lot of questions, and uh, yeah, we need to uh, do more studies on, on, on it. Well, Shen Wan, Shen Wan, uh, well, according to Prow, uh, uh, the, 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 the error uh, uh, postmark uh, uh, was not used on mails. In fact, it was used on uh, the, the postal order. And this one uh, this photo, and uh, he has taken that photo in a local stamp exhibition in 1997, and uh, it was from uh, the uh, uh, John B. Shaw's collection. Okay, Shang Triple Hong Hong is uh, not that rare, and you, you can uh, have it found from time to time. And, but most of the uh, days uh, of those covers are in fact are uh, 15 of November 1962. So I suppose, uh, and then he sent a few covers to the other collectors on that day. And in fact, uh, that era uh, has been lasting for quite a few months. And uh, you can also find it uh, on the first day cover of, of, of that uh, commemorative stamp issue from 1963. In Morrison Hill, Hong Kong, uh, uh, yeah, Andrew has described it and, uh, and, and uh, have told us about the story. And this is a bigger and So maybe I'm not sure it's quite, quite, quite rare or not. So Grandville Row and uh, the, the day's nine in budget. And in fact, if you have a picture of the, the actual uh, day stamp of, 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 of this uh, small packet uh, cancellation, you can see that it's, it's just, just like those um, uh, 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 day stamps you, you, you can, but, but with a, a, a plate uh, attached at the bottom, uh, which indicate the post office lane. And uh, I'm not sure whether that error can be uh, uh, fixed by just uh, removing the, 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 the plate with the post office name and then uh, turn it back 180 degrees. Yeah. I'm I not sure. I think you can. I've actually handled one of these uh, rubber stamps. And then- Oh, the, really? Yeah, basically it's just a, a rubber, it is a, it's a round plate, uh, uh, a rubber pad, and then you, and with a hole in the middle for the date. So basically this, this was actually uh, stuck the wrong way around. So basically, oh. what you could do is to take the take the rubber thing out and reverse it, uh -huh. and it back onto the uh, to the cancer. Oh, so it can it, it could be the a collector's paradise. They they they, they just well, uh, convinced the, the postmaster of the branch office, yeah. and then <laughs> took and took then, the took, took the yeah, took, cancer took reason the by themselves, and I, then I, I do what they want to let do. Him, let him do it, but uh, it is possible <laughs> that. No, you know, if if he's a, a well-known character uh, amongst a, a, post, a friend or a postmaster or something, he, he could play yeah. with those cancellor. Oh, ah, okay. Then take the plate out, uh, uh, turn it round, and then stuck it back onto the cancel. Right. right. Yeah, but okay. this, this could be a, just an error by the postmaster. You know, <laughs> he wouldn't have known. Uh, you know, it would, would probably be just a mistake of sticking. It looks quite new. You see, this thing, this is the same style as the. Um, uh, the cloud we wrote in the same style of, of, of cancel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This current raw. That's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, clear example. Uh, and also the Morrison Hill. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, that's uh, what I'm going to show. And that's the end of my presentation. And yeah, yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. I mean, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, yes. Good. Uh, Thank you, Simon, for showing us all these, and uh, we we will all go in, into our shoe box and 
and check it out whether we got any any Kowloon Hong Hong. I mean, Susan probably be got a few, you know. <laughs> yeah, please send me an image on that. Yes, yes, that's it's a fascinating. Uh, but I, I I got a feeling that uh, you know one or either one of the Hong Kong uh, date stamp was never actually used. Perhaps it wasn't used. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he, he, you know, the, the postmaster probably got a bunch of those uh, Kowloon Hong Kong, Hong Hong. I can't, 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 they stand that two of them were wrong, and yeah. then he just used one at the counter, and then and and found it wrong, and got, well, he went back to the uh, to the back room and then look at all the all the cancels and found another one, and then start playing with it. I don't know that. That's well, you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's a show. In fact, according to what what I was told, and and, and they they just uh, took out one. New stamp, uh, new 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 day stamp only uh, mm. for using the counter, and, mm -hmm. and then the other one, uh, wow! Well, in, in fact, so I suppose uh, one of the type of um, um, uh, uh, probably the, the type B covers I will produce at the back end. Yeah, yeah, good. One of the one of the interesting, well, just to me, so perhaps it's a poor reflection of myself. Um, one of the interesting things that's never actually been checked out properly or, or written down and uh, analysed is the fact that some branch office um, cancellators survived the war and some did not. Mm -hmm. So you can see certain... Uh, cancelling stamps used at various uh, of the post of branch post offices in 1945 uh, actually were issued and used before the war. Some some survived and some did not. Well, why is this stolen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why still? Why still? Why? St Steal one, <laughs> not the other one. <laughs> yeah. well, some, some collectors like 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 just keeping these uh, memorabilia, you know, <laughs> collectors of uh, postmarks. You know. Absolutely, and the other the thing instead of the just impression of it. Yeah, um, and the other interesting aspect is the fact that these post office guys were producing these types of uh, philatelic shall we call them, uh, items. Hmm. And so this was not quite common, or I think this was not unusual, because if you, re if you remember the December 25th, yeah. 1941 yeah. covers were, were mainly associated with GPO stuff. Well, we in fact the, the, the 25th of December 1941 issue, yeah, and, and the, the CPA, uh, someone from CPA has written a story about that. And yeah, I can share with you the details. Oh, please, yeah, oh, interesting. <laughs> so, your, your daughter should appear more often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she is trying to produce some era postmarks. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right, thank you very much, Simon. Yes. Um, has anybody got any comments or anything to show? Right. Um, okay, if, if not, um, we, we can actually discuss uh, a little bit about the, uh, the current situation about journal distribution. Um, I received um, an email from the, uh, the, uh, the Hong Kong Study Circle Committee uh, from London saying that uh, uh, members are a little bit disappointed uh, with the current situation of the uh, suspension of airmail uh, to, to, to the UK. Um, actually, that, that, that the airmail has been suspended since March. So it's a, it's a lot, I think, or, or even before, I can't remember, I think maybe it's March this last year. So, I mean, you know, for such a long period without airmail, um, you know, it is very difficult uh, for, for the study circle members actually to get a copy, uh, to get a, a hard copy of the journal. And many of them actually elected hard copies instead of electronic copies. 
and uh, they have to be satisfied from either printing it out themselves from the website to thanks to uh, Frank, uh, who, who actually put the, uh, uh, the, 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 hot, the, the PDF on the, on the website. Um, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's really just not on, you know, that the Hong Kong Post is still suspending uh, airmail service to the UK. Uh, I, I gather that the airmail service to Canada, USA and Australia uh, are now back to normal, but not the UK. I don't know why. Um, maybe if uh, you know, you know, one of you might might just go and uh, write a letter through the post office or ask them why there's no airmail service. I know that there's speed post, but you know, sending sending uh, uh, journal the journal by speed post is just uh, very expensive. So um, I don't know what what's got what. Uh, going to happen if, if the air, there's still no normal airmail to the UK, uh, you know, for a, another extended period, maybe that uh, we, uh, one, one solution I can think of is to have a, a, a British edition, you know, uh, some copies printed in the UK and sent uh, locally, you know, uh, you know, from uh, that would maybe, well, I certainly would speed up the distribution of the journal and uh, possibly the cost as well because i'm sure sending how, how much is how much is second class post of sending the journal in the uk depends on the weight not sure a pound or something much, much more than from hong kong no it's really? much more than that. It's really more than that. 40 or hmm? so 140 up to 250 grams Ah, okay, okay, one forty. It'd be a large. It would be a large letter, though. Would that be a large letter, Duncan? Yeah. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> I just uh, while Duncan's checking it out, I received last week. I received an airmail uh, letter, thankfully of not too much consequence, from Hong Kong, uh, dated February. Yeah. Yeah. Three months, at least three months delay. Yeah. By, by so and I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for stuff, at least seven items yeah. from Hong Kong. Yeah. From March onwards. Yeah, really is not on. Uh, but they arrive, they, they, you know, most of them would arrive quite safely, but you know, there really is the long, very long delay. Yeah, as, as a large letter, it's 140 up to 250 grams, 183 up to 500 grams. 183. Mm. Yeah. So it's actually, it's about the same, actually sending it by airmail, but it's a shame that we don't have a, any airmail to the UK anymore. So it's actually the postage is about the same because it costs something, 20 something dollars to, to send by airmail to Hong Kong if there's an airmail surface. Uh, interestingly, the, surf the surface mail postage and air mail postage is not much difference. It's only about 15% difference. So uh, no wonder nobody sent it by air mail, but uh, by service mail. Uh, but, but I'm not sure, you know, why that there's, there's uh, I, I think, you know, if, if they say it's due to COVID, I mean, you know, surely you get COVID in, 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 in Canada, you get COVID in, in, in USA and um, I mean, in the UK is not bad. I mean, at least you, you still got the speed post. So if you want to renew your passport or something, you can send it by speed post to, to, to Liverpool. But, uh, you know, uh, South Africa is worse. There's no mail service to South Africa, which is just totally incredible. It must, it must be due to the contracts. Contract carrier, yeah. Yeah, yeah. must be. I just wonder why whether it's actually it's Cathay's. They don't. The government don't pay. The, the post office, you know, just don't don't pay enough to for for Cathay to carry mail to UK anymore. Maybe. No, it's a shame. So I I think the next I I gather that uh, the study circle was a meeting um, uh, very soon about this. Uh, uh, either, is it AGM or something, Richard? Oh, there's, there's a meeting. There's, there's a meeting. There's, there's a meeting in London. A physical this meeting. month, but only about, I don't, I think less, less than a handful of people are attending. Yeah, yeah, I think they will discuss this matter of, of having, uh, you know, we have to solve this up, uh, you know, whether, whether you, could, you could actually have a UK edition of the journal, uh, because, I mean, you know, surely, you know, some members are just fed up 
uh, receiving uh, email email copies or, or much delayed a copy uh, mangled in in in, in, the, in the by service mail in the ship. No, well, I think Frank's Frank's done the, his part in terms of putting it, you know, uh, making it available on the website. But of course, not every oh, not up. everybody um, uses that very good yeah. facility. But yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so so uh, anyway, because the July one is is coming up pretty soon, uh, uh, Luke is very punctual on that matter. So I, I, we have to decide what to do with the next uh, next edition of the journal. So whether to send a portion, uh, send the file to to UK to to somebody to print it out and send it uh, there, or uh, to continue as is. Anyhow, that, that's 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 uh, the society matter. Uh, yep. Anyway, so anybody got any further comments before we close off uh, today? No? Billy? Susan? No, no, nothing. Yes, okay. Well, anyway, uh, Charles, any comments you want to make? No? Okay. Well, and that in that case, uh, and Andrew, just one final remark. Okay. Uh, you okay. have any idea about next month's topic of the meeting? No, I haven't actually. Uh, May maybe just three topics because I, I suppose October will be on this, right? This yeah. summer vacation. Well, yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, what, what else? Uh, what all suggestions have you got? I don't know. Maybe just limit to 10 or 15 minutes per person and then uh, yes. any, any topics they, they decided to do. Uh, we, could, we could do a show and tell, yes. Okay, yeah. that, that could be nice uh, for, for next month, yeah. Okay, uh, in that case, um, uh, I'd like to close off the meeting by you know, thanking everybody, you know, all the presenters and uh, members of both the Philatech Society and I think mostly Hong Kong Study Circle for, for, for joining us this evening or this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And um, and then and then of course I have to thank uh, the FIEP for sponsoring the, the meeting. And uh, well, anyway, have a nice uh, afternoon, evening, and uh, uh, see, see you next time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. bye. bye.